What's up guys, we're here with the 2023 Tesla Model 3. It's one of the new Teslas that comes without ultrasonic sensors, which has been kind of annoying. I don't like the fact that there's no sensors. So when I park the car, sometimes I'm like, am I gonna crash into something and ruin my nice chalk gray wrap? Or am I gonna retain the wrap, it's gonna look nice, you know? There are cameras up top, there are cameras all around the vehicle. So it's a very high tech car, but it's like no sensors. Come on now, like when I went back into the spot, I want to be able to see how far I can go before I crash into something. So there's a new update. I think it's 2023.6.9 or something like that. We're going to test the camera's ability to detect objects. Obviously, there's like blind spots down here and in different areas of the car where the ultrasonic sensors would have excelled and, you know, done its job. Like my personal car, the pink salmon Tesla, it has the ultrasonic sensors. It's a little older, but that's OK. But yeah, this video is going to cover that update. And we're gonna really compare this car without sensors to my car with sensors. <laughs> so you've had no sensors on your car for how many months now? I got in October, so November, December, January, February, March, five months basically. Five months without sensors on the bumper, which, you know, you got your car wrapped, it's kind of hard to tell on camera, so in that sense, it's good. In one way, yeah, it's good too, because you don't have those little circles on the yeah, car that exactly. off the look. It looks clean. Oh so, yeah, it looks way cleaner. Yeah, it was kind of annoying, especially me, um, very like as you guys could kind of see a uh, curb rash here curb rash here too unfortunately is it because your car so, didn't have sensors yeah pretty so much tesla should refund you then yeah yeah Elon, if you're watching send me my money, send me my money back. Back. and right. also why would you take the prices down yeah so yeah it would have been much nicer if i had sensors on there telling me now i saw when i upgraded it yesterday updated it so it has 19 inches or 20 inches whatever it is shows you the difference so let's try it out and let's see how it does so guys, you can see that the other Tesla without the sensors in front and my car is detecting 27 inches. So let's see what this car is going to show without these sensors and just like vision only. Yeah. So as you guys see, mine says 22. What was your saying? Mine was saying 27 inches. Yeah, mine says 21, 22. You're just 22 inches. Let me detect and see which one's right. So guys, basically this car doesn't have any sensors. It was saying about 20 inches of distance between this car and this car. This car has the sensors. You can see it's a little ugly. Uh, it's okay. But this car is saying it's only uh, about 27 inches. So we're going to put these cars head to head. I'll go bumper to bumper. And it is saying it's close to 29 inches. If you see, maybe if you go up a little bit, yeah, and the maybe. bumpers are a little closer it is about 27 well, inches yeah, so <laughs> the cars with the sensors are extremely accurate this car without the sensors is obviously a very new update so it's going to improve with time but it's not super accurate you know the margin of error seems to be like 30 percent maybe 40 percent so hopefully that improves with time yeah guys so it's a little confusing right now the car's in drive my foot's on the brake and it keeps fluctuating because 24, 23, 25, 27, 26, 25 keeps changing up. Oh, that's weird. And it says park assist unavailable. What? Here in my hand, I have a measuring tape. And honestly, it's kind of weird because in the car, the distance was fluctuating a lot. It was like 14 inches all the way to like 21 inches. And it's been pretty stationary. But we're going to test and see how accurate it is. So here's the wall and here's the car. When I go over to the car, it is showing wow this is really weird it's showing 34 inches okay <laughs> so this is showing 34 inches the car was showing about 15 inches i'm very confused are you confused yeah i think maybe we should go to a parking lot and try it out there and yeah, see how that we're, works we're gonna try a parking lot in a it second possibly but from it's, the doors or something but it's very confusing because this is like one of the most important areas where you would want the sensors to work. It's saying 14 inches and it's, I guess it's a little conservative. 14 inches is, is this. So if there is a invisible barrier here, then Tesla, you did a good job. Guys, in this test, I have a backpack on the floor. And as you can see, it is pretty level to where you'd have the ultrasonic sensors on the other Teslas, which we can showcase in a little bit. But when we come into the car and we check what the car is showing, it's basically it keeps fluctuating it's fluctuating it's saying 15 inches and that's just weird because the distance between the car right now and the wall is at 34 inches and 15 inches if you're telling me there's 15 inches of space between this and this that is just not the case so guys this is a little bit of a ghetto setup but what we're getting at is my driver over there 
is saying that the car is not detecting the backpack here, it's not detecting me, and it's just showing that there is a distance between this and the wall, which is, again, we measured it 34 inches, but in the car it's showing 15 inches. So the ultrasonic sensors are probably going to need to make a return just based on our initial testing because the camera system, while you would think that it's capable of seeing everything around the car, clearly this is just a blind spot. Like it's not the angle from which the car can see. It can't see anything under here. And that's what's important because you're not trying to ruin your front bumper, which is kind of frustrating, I'm not gonna lie, for a car of this price range. Now we're going to test and see the reverse with the Tesla because first we've noticed that, you know, if you go forward and there's an object like that that just happens to appear, it's not gonna be a great uh, scenario because you're probably gonna ruin your bumper. But in this case, we are backing in the vehicle and we're going to see what the vehicle says on the display. All right guys, ruler test again. So the car now says there's a 30 inch gap between the rear of the car and the wall. So when we go ahead and measure, we're going to see that it says it's, it's about 36 inches. <laughs> it's about 36 inches, the car is off by six inches. I mean, it's like, if you're just gonna start throwing numbers on the screen, might as well have them be accurate. But it's like, we need sensors on this car clearly. Now we're gonna see if it could detect an object like this. Again, this is a backpack, but if it was a brick or a concrete barrier or something, and it just happens to be right here, you, you, will, you will hit it. If you don't see it with your camera, you, sh you should be able to see it with your camera, but this could be kind of concerning. This could be an interesting scenario. So we are going to run the same backpack test again. It is a backpack, but it could certainly be any sort of object you can think of. If you're in a mall parking lot and something just happens to appear under your bumper, we're going to see if the car can detect that. Now the camera, you could probably see it based on the angle, but if we go and look into the vehicle, it just shows lines around the vehicle. It doesn't say that there is an object. Oh, it's saying there's a semi truck. <laughs> it is saying there's a semi truck in the vehicle and we're in a garage. <laughs> so that was kind of weird, unless it thinks I'm a semi truck. Now he's going to back into the backpack. So the car should technically have seen the backpack with whatever cameras it has. So now you can see it is saying 20, it's basically saying 30 inches till he hits something, right? There is the wall. There is certainly less than 30 inches between the Tesla and the backpack, which means there are certainly blind spots around this car. Look at the distance between the backpack and the car. And now when we go into the car, it is showing 24 inches. That's a little weird, huh? And they're well, showing you know, a semi truck still. I want to throw out there, you didn't keep mentioning about the sensor system, but supposedly the benefit of it is that if you do get into an accident, you don't have to pay all that extra money just for the sensors. They just quickly replace your bumpers. So That's true. It is guys, cheaper. Keep that in mind too. That means you'll probably be going through bumpers more often because you're going to be hitting more stuff. <laughs> yeah, like backpacks. Okay, guys, look how bad this is. Look how bad this is. So you could see in the camera, there's a chair. You could see it shows 17, 18 inches, right? But when we come back to the chair, this is not 17 inches. This is probably like, this is my hand. This is no more than like four inches. Now it says stop when you put your hand. So, and he's, he's saying when I put my hand over there, it said stop, but we'll it's it like, again? that's an object. It should definitely be able to detect the object in this distance. So this is really strange. It's almost still not functional. It like barely works, huh? Yeah, but uh, you know, I really think they'll probably start updating it and everything. And yeah, it'll improve it with time, better. but yeah. for now it's just like, why? <laughs> Why would you put it into the car if it's not working like 100%? Well, I'm sure tests and see, get feedback and stuff like that. That's feedback right. when people hit, hit stuff. So guys, that's pretty much it for the comparison between the Tesla without ultrasonic sensors and then my Tesla with the ultrasonic sensors. The car with the sensors seems to be way more accurate. It was almost like pinpoint accurate when we had measured it versus this car. It's like iffy. It doesn't detect objects in the blind spot, which is something I was definitely worried about and it's not something I would, I would depend on like I would with this one. So hopefully Tesla improves that over time, but just be wary, you know, if you have a car without ultrasonic sensors, you can't have as much confidence when you drive as you would with this car. So stay tuned for more videos on the ChargeGo channel. And you guys, thank you for watching and tapping in. We'll see you soon.